CZB Corridor in Louisville, a mainline communication station. Smart gun, hold it down. Today is the day that we are paying tribute to uh, one of Louisville's finest musicians and uh, somebody who is close to us, a lot of us, Stephen Static Major Garrett. Good. B96.5, hello? Hey, um, I just want to say I really appreciate y'all playing Steve's song. Well, I mean, we couldn't do any less, you know? I went to high school with them, so. Oh, I did you? I work at 5 o'clock, but I've been listening to you all. I'm not going to leave until you all finish, so. I just think it's a wonderful thing. Our media's so, not covering it too much yet. So uh, well. He definitely needs all of his, his due, so. So what what kind of kid was he in school? Um, he was, I mean, in high school, you know. He wasn't a kid in high school. He was a grown man, but he was fun. <laughs> but my memory of him was, um, I went to school in North Carolina when I graduated from college. Uh-huh. And so I was listening to the radio once on my senior year. And um, the DJ was like, yeah, we have this new group here, um, Slayer, you know, and, you know, she didn't really know who they were. Nobody else was. I was like, that's Steve and all of them. Right, so right, I called right. into the radio station. I was like, hey, I know them. She's like, you do? And I was like, yeah, I went to Wagner High School. So she's like, hold on. So she gets on the air. She's like, hey, guys, what do y'all know about Wagner High School? They're like, huh, Wagner High School? And so they put us on the air, and we had, like, this five-minute conversation with each other, and my friends and I, you know, they invited us to the concert and stuff. But, you know, she's always been a very caring, generous, and talented guy, very behind the scenes. But, you know, uh -huh. as you can see in all the songs he's playing, you know, he, he handles his business well. Gonna be, gonna be, gonna wow. That was the one that started it all 10 years ago this month. It's devastating, to be honest, man. But um, I, believe in, I believe in God. I believe that he's going to... I believe the statics, Steve is in a better place, and I, I believe, like yes, you said, we was talking earlier, he's smiling on us, down on us right now. You're talking about half my life, mm -hmm. almost half my life that I've been a part of his life, and uh, mm -hmm. just watching him grow from a, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a boy, a young man to a man, and watching, you know, him with his kids, and I just, I just, um, I, it was a privilege. And it's been an honor to be his friend as well as his brother and to, you know, be on that ride with him. You know what I'm saying? Right, uh, right. Best man at my wedding, you know, uh, mm -hmm. godfather to my kids, you know, so. Starve together. <laughs> it's yeah. hard, man. You know, I mean, just, I mean, I miss being able to, man, it's hard, dude, because I can look over to my left and see digital. And I know I can signal him to take that note. Right. Cause right. I'm getting ready to start cracking right. on my voice, you know what I'm saying? And I can look over to the right and be like, "Hey, you need to go low, cause I'm getting ready to wail up top." You right. know, this right. is like, man. Wow. B96.5. Hello. Yeah, I wanted to pay a tribute to Stephen Garrett. I grew up with him and I knew him from high school and everything. Uh huh. And I just wanted to tell his family and his wife and his kids how sorry I am for the loss because it is a really great one. If you would have told me on Sunday <laughs> saying that I was going to have to be talking about burying one of my brothers on right. Monday, I would have caused you everything. But what a child but, of God, right? There you go. Right, much. right. With Steve being in the room with us and Steve being with his family right now, that something bigger and better is going to come of all of this. Yes, sir. And... And I don't want to sound like I'm preaching or trying to minister, but it's, no, it's you know, right talk. now it's just right. me right. And, and, and you. After every storm, you know, is and, is, uh, is is a brighter day. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, that little that little place that that feels empty, you know, you're gonna see him there. You're gonna feel him there. Right. Um, so I, I I'm not so saddened by the fact that you know he's he's you know I feel better knowing that he's in a better place you know my biggest concern is is for you guys and the family and um getting through this we're gonna man uh, we're gonna get through we're gonna get through it man the, the what i would like to say sometimes i like to say to the, the city and uh, i mean this guy loved he loved Love, Louisville. Loved. I'm even get ebonic with it. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Louisville, right. Kentucky. You know, um, he wore the state and the city on his back, and he represented it well, man. And uh, I say to, to 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 black men, just to, to to people in general, man. Don't you know? Not even to put a color on it. Don't be. But us as black men, we so macho. We it's hard for us to tell. You know, to, to be true with our feelings. Right. You know? Right. Don't be a, a scared or. 
embarrassed to tell your brother or your friend that you love him. If you really love him, tell him, man, because you never know, man. And that's one thing I, I honestly can say wholeheartedly, that every time me and Static talk, and we, we talk at least a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. That's how we ended every conversation. I love you, bro. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. And there wasn't no nothing feminine about it. It was just real talk. It's real. That's what and, it is. And, and, and we got to start teaching our young Black males, man, that it's cool to to, to be able to express to love your, your brother, express right. your emotional side. Are you, you know what I'm saying? Like exactly, exactly. If you love them, let them know, man, because you never know. And once they gone, they gone. Right. And everything, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to have something that you could have said. When and not, and and not, not said, said it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. And um, we gonna miss you, boy. I'm telling you, I miss you. I love you. I always loved you. And on that, all I'm gonna say is. Stay tuned. It's Louisville Speed 96.5. I think for the people that knew him, he meant a lot, you know, but I really don't think that Louisville really knew who they really had in their backyard. Anybody that, that knew him, it's extremely devastating, you know. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still not real to us for real. You know, you uh, know, it's a hard thing to deal with, and it's tough. You know, he's just a regular, down-to-earth guy. And sometimes I would be, um, we would be at places, and we might leave the studio, and we'd be with Dr. Dre, and I'd be like, man, I can't believe, you know, Dr. Dre's calling you for a record. He would go in the studio. We might get there at 6, and we might not leave till 6, 7 the next morning. And that's a regular night. You know, that, I mean, that's regular, you know. Very seldom do we go in the studio and, you know, you go in there and it's a couple hours. You know, he worked with Puffy. Um, you know, he was just doing some stuff for the Dan new Danity Kane group. He did some stuff with Puffy and Christina Aguilera, you know. And so it, it was just, it was surreal, but he stayed humble. He's just a humble person. And that's what people need to know about him. He's just very, very, very humble person.